I'm going to be working the homework for 7.2, uh, right triangle trigonometry. And in this first problem, we're asked to find the six trigonometric function values for the angle theta um, in this triangle over here. So I'm going to just draw this triangle here instead. And just notice that this right triangle, the angle here is theta is up here at the top, which means this 14 is the adjacent side and 28 is the hypotenuse. That means we still need to solve for this side, which I'm gonna call A. Now using the Pythagorean theorem or identity, we have that 14 squared plus A squared must equal 28 squared. And if we use our calculators to do that, we'll get 196 plus A squared equals 784. And subtracting on both sides, we get 588. And that means A must be plus or minus the square root of 588, but we're only gonna look at the positive number because it's the length of the side of the triangle. Now the computer is going to want us to simplify this. So we're gonna to need to see if we can break down 588. So I just get on my calculator to do 588 divided by a number that I know is a perfect square. So let me try four. So I know that um, this does, uh, four does divide into this 147 times. Let me try a bigger number, a bigger perfect square. So let me try 588 divided by, let's go with 16. Nope, doesn't go in. Uh, 588, uh, but you know what, let's just do four again. I'll show you how you can do this. This is four times 147. And now I wanna see if I can break down um, 147 at all into um, you know, a product of two numbers here. So uh, let's see, two doesn't go in there because it's not even. Uh, three goes in there 49 times. So three times 49 and then times four. So I know that 588, 588 is four times three times 49 and both of these numbers are perfect squares. So when I take the square root of that, I can really just do square root of four times square root of three times square root of 49. And this is just two times root three times seven. And I can put the two and seven together to get me 14. So 14 root three is what A is. Okay, so I know what A is. Let me come up here and put A here, 14 root three. All right, so sine by definitions, let me just write them all down here, sine of theta, should be the opposite side. So just remember that the opposite side here is gonna be um, this side. This is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so sine using Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this, this would be uh, 14 root three over 28. And then I can reduce this 14 goes into 14 once and goes into 28 twice. So I get this root three over two. Cosine of theta will be adjacent over hypotenuse. So 14 over 28, which is just a half. And then tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So 14 root three over 14, which is just root three. Okay, now I'll do all the reciprocals. So cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine, so it's two over root three. And then I'll multiply by root three on top and bottom to rationalize the denominator. And that's my answer. And then secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's just two. And then cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of root three over one, I put one over root three. And then again, I rationalize. So I multiply the top and bottom by root three. I get root three over three. Okay, so I should be able to put these answers in now. So we should have, first one is square root of three divided by two. Okay, cosine should be one half. Tangent should be square root of three. And then cosecant should be two 
square root of three, and then all of that divided by three. Yeah, it should take that. And then we have secant, which should just be two. And then cotangent, which should be square root of three over three. <clears throat> All right, very good. Let's take a look at the next one. So here we have a triangle, same sort of thing. So let me go ahead and work through this one. Notice where theta is this time, theta is over here which means root three is the opposite and then four is the adjacent. I need to use Pythagorean to get the hypotenuse. So four squared plus root three squared should equal, let's call it C squared, that's C. This should be 16 plus three equals C squared. So we get 19 equals C squared and then plus or minus the square root, but I'm only gonna take the plus case. So C is root 19. So let me put that right here now. <clears throat> All right, so this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. And so let's do this. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So root three over root 19. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll rationalize, so I multiply top and bottom by root 19 to get rid of the root 19 on the bottom. So on the top, um, I'm just going to put those together. So I'm going to do one root and then, <coughs> hold on. <coughs> I do three times 19, which is 57. And then on the bottom is just 19. Cosine theta should be the adjacent side, which is four over root 19. I rationalize. So I get four root 19 over 19. Tangent theta will be the um, opposite root three over the adjacent. So I can just leave it like that. And now all the reciprocal functions. So cosecant should be 19 over root 57. Multiply top and bottom by root 57. <clears throat> 19 root 57 over 57. And then secant theta should be the reciprocal of cosine. So it's going to be 19 over 4 root 19. So I multiply this by root 19, root 19 over root 19. So that way I can get rid of the radical on the bottom. So 19 root 19 over 4 times 19. Because the root 19 is uh, multiplied to be 19. So I'm just going to do the 4 times 19. I get 76. And then cotangent finally should be the reciprocal tangent. And then I need another root three. So I have to rationalize all of these basically. So four root three over three. All right, let's go with some answers here. All right, so first one, root 57 divided by 19. The next one is four root 19 divided by 19. Tangent theta should be root three over four. And then cosecant should be 19 root 57 over 57. Uh-oh, uh, which one did I cosecant? 57. Did I type it in? Uh, yeah. 19 over root 57. Root 57 on top. Bottom. I'm not sure why it's not taking this. Let me try it. Let me try it this way. Let me just try 19 over root 57 and see if it takes that. Hmm, well, that's weird. This is why these systems can be so frustrating. Okay, let me try this one then. Let me just not rationalize them and take uh, this one right here before we multiply by root 19 over root 19. So I'm just gonna do 19 over um, four root 19. That'll be very frustrating if it takes that. 
Oh, wow. That's really, really frustrating. Same with this one, four over root three. I don't understand why they want you to rationalize sometimes and not other times. That can be very, very frustrating. Okay, so this next one is very much the same. I, I think I'm just gonna let you go through that one on your own. Okay, this one's different. So it says, use the identities to find the exact value of each of the four remaining trig functions. So they tell us that sine of theta is five over six. Cosine theta is um, root 11 over six. So tangent theta, right? By definition, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. And we know sine theta is five over six, and we know cosine theta is root 11 over six. So what I'll do is I'll, instead of dividing by this fraction, I will multiply by its reciprocal. That's basically flipping it and bringing it up. And then the six is canceled, so you just get five over root 11. Okay, so I get five over root 11. Let's see if it takes that five over root 11. Five over root 11. Okay, it's taking it. Okay, cosecant. So cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So I'm just gonna take this one and flip it over, six over five. And then secant is a reciprocal of cosine. So I'm just gonna take cosine and flip it over. So six over, I wonder if it'll take square root. No, it doesn't do that. Okay, it's not that smart. Um, square root of 11. And now cotangent would be the reciprocal of tangent. So I just take this answer here and flip it over. So square root of 11 over five. There we go. All right, so now the next one, use the definition or identities to find the exact value of the um, remaining five trig functions. All right, so this one is a little bit tricky because they only give us a cosine of theta is one fifth. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna draw a right triangle. I'm gonna label one of the sides theta. And then I'm gonna use the fact that cosine theta is one over five. And cosine by definition is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I can look at the adjacent side as being one and the hypotenuse as being five. So the adjacent side here is one, the hypotenuse is five. That means I can solve for this side I'll call B. One squared plus B squared equals five squared. So we get one plus B squared equals 25. And subtract one on both sides, we get B squared is 24. And then I take the square root plus or minus, but I'm only gonna take a positive case here. So that means that B is uh, root 24. And once I have the whole triangle, I can figure out everything else. Sine would be opposite, so root 24 over hypotenuse. So this should be square root of 24 over five. Uh-oh, what happened? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I do all my math right. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Square, let me just double check this real quick. Subtract one, 24, square root 24 is this side, sine. Hmm, 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 hmm. I am not sure why it's counting this wrong. I'm not sure why it's counting this wrong. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, let me put it in again. I wanna see if it will tell me eventually what the answer is. Oh, geez. Okay. All right. All right. So this is why on the test, I'm not going to count off for this. Root 24. Okay. 24 breaks down to B. Or, well, yeah, we can go four times six. And then we can write that as square root of four times six, and that's square root of four times square root of six, and then that's two root six. Okay, that's frustrating. All right, tangent, tangent is gonna be um, the opposite over adjacent. So this divided by this, so that's just gonna be the root 24, but I'm gonna write two root six. 
Okay, cotangent is just one over root 24. So I'm gonna put, let's try this, one over two root six. So it's the other one flipped over. See, didn't make me rationalize. Okay, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I just flipped that one over. So it's five over two root six. And last one, secant is cosine flipped over, which is just the original uh, given information flipped. So it's just five. All right. Okay, this one will work the same way. I'm not gonna work through the whole problem, but I'm just gonna set it up. So they give us a tangent theta is one over 12. So if I draw a right triangle, here's theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. I mean, yeah, so over adjacent. So I can say the opposite side is one, the adjacent side is 12. And then I can find this by doing 12 squared plus one squared equals C squared. And so you get 144, 145, equals c squared, so square root of 145 is c. And let's see, let's break 145 down. 145, let's see, five goes in there, right? I'm gonna just use my calculator. It goes in there 29 times, and 29 is prime. I don't think that's gonna break down. Square root of 145. Yeah, can't break down. So this is this will be right just to use this. You don't have to simplify it. <clears throat> so now you should be able to do Sokotoa and then flip and everything and, and get the answers. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, so here we have something a little different. Here we're using the fundamental identities and or complementary angle theorem to find the exact value. So here we're just using the fact that, um, you know what, that'd be cool if I did that. You know, I think about it. No, that wouldn't. Never mind. I, I'm just talking about something else. Just ignore me. We're using the Pythagorean identity, which is a very important ident identity. It says if you have sine squared of some angle plus cosine squared of that same angle, that that must be equal to one. And so here we have sine squared of 23 degrees plus cosine squared of 23 degrees, the same angle, 23 degrees. So this has to be one. Nothing to it. Okay, here we have sine of 76 degrees times cosecant of 76 degrees. So what we can use here is the fact that cosecant by definition is one over sine. So this is one over sine 76 degrees. And since you're multiplying these two, just multiply straight across, you'll get sine 76 degrees over sine 76 degrees. Anything over itself is one. So the answer here is one. All right, for this one, um, all we have to do is use the fact that sine of 67 over cosine of 67, that's actually tangent of 67 degrees. So tangent of 67 degrees minus tangent of 67 degrees is zero. All right, so this one, we're gonna use the complementary angle theorem. So this says that if these two angles add up to be 90, they're complementary. So 43 plus 47 is equal to 90. So these are complementary angles. So the theorem says that, um, I'm just gonna look at this, this one here, cosine of 47. It says cosine of 47 degrees, well, it must be equal to sine of the complementary angle, 43 degrees. So if I replace this with sine of 43 degrees, and I take sine of 43 degrees and subtract sine of 43 degrees, then I will get zero. All right, next one, same thing. I'm just gonna focus on the bottom here. Um, these are complementary, 37 and 53 add up to be 90. So I can say that sine of 53 degrees is equal to cosine of its complement, which is 37. And so if I put cosine of 37 on top of cosine of 37, I would get one. All right, this one, all right, this one looks a little, little bit different. So here we have um, 
tangent of 48 degrees minus cosine of 42 over cosine of 48. So I notice we have 48 here and here. So what I'll do is I'll take this, I'll use the complementary angle theorem and say that that's the same as sine of the complementary angle, which is 48 degrees. And then sine of 48 over cosine of 48, well, that's tangent of 48. And so tangent of 48, take away tangent of 48, we should get zero here. All right. Okay, so here we go. Given that cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two, use the trigonometric identities to find the exact value of the following. So this is where I told you in class that I wanted you to start memorizing that first quadrant of the unit circle. So that's what I'm gonna use here. These are common angles, right? So remember we have our 45 degrees, we have our 30 degrees, we have our 60 degrees, and we have these common numbers, right? This one was root three over two, one half. This one is root two over two, root two over two. This one is one half root three over two. Of course, this one is one zero. This one is zero one. Okay, so 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, but this is also pi over six. This is pi over four. This is in radians and this is pi over three. Okay, so we should be able to do these pretty quick. What is sine of 60 degrees? All right, so for sine of 60 degrees, we're gonna to go to 60 degrees and because we're talking about sine, we're gonna look at the y coordinate. It should just be root three over two. Root three over two, boom. Oh, I forgot to divide. Root three over two. <laughs> it's still messed up. All right, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Where are we? Oh my God. <laughs> All right, get out of there. Okay. Oh, what a disaster. Okay, square root of three divided by two. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take sine of 30 degrees squared. So, the first thing I do is go 30 degrees. Sine is the y coordinate, so one half, and then I square it. And one half times one half is one fourth. Okay, secant of pi over six. Okay, so remember, secant, secant of pi over six should be equal to one over cosine of pi over six. All right, that's because it's the reciprocal identity. So first, let me figure out what cosine of pi over six is. So I go to pi over six, which is right here. Cosine is the x coordinate, so that's root three over two. So this is really one over the square root of three over two. Anytime you have one over a fraction, the fraction flips over. So two over root three should be our answer. Two over square root three. Okay. Cosecant is going to be um, a cosecant of pi over three. So let's see, cosecant by definition, cosecant of pi over three is one over sine of pi over three. So that's one over, okay, pi over three, we go to pi over three here. We go to sine is the y coordinate. So we go to the y coordinate right here. It's root three over two. And then we flip it, it's two over root three. We're gonna get the same answer that we got in the previous one, just coincidentally, two over square root three. And okay, that was it. All right, so now let me, let me erase this stuff. And I'll leave that up there. Oh, you know what? Okay, yeah, I can clear this out then. All right, so for here, we want to, given that tangent of theta is 13, use the trig identities to find the exact value of the following. So tangent of theta is 13 degrees, uh, sorry, tangent of theta is 13. All right, so let's see, what should we do here? It's a little tricky, but we can do this. So look at this first one, secant squared theta. We don't have, we cannot draw a triangle here because all we know is tangent theta is 13. Well, I guess we could, but they want us to use identities. Let's, 
Let's go to the triangle. I think that that's probably the most constructive way of doing this. Okay, so if we draw a right triangle, we call this tan, uh, call that theta. Tangent is, we're being told that tangent of theta is 13, which I'm gonna write as 13 over one, which means since tangent is opposite over adjacent, I can put 13 there and one there. And then I can solve for that other side. So one squared plus 13 squared equals um, C squared. And so one plus, what's that, 169 equals C squared. So 170 equals C squared. So take the square root on both sides. I get C is root 170. So this is square root of 170. Let me just check that, um, can't break that down. So square root of 170, we may be able to break that down if the number goes in there. No, it doesn't. All right, so here we go. Let's do secant theta. So now the way I like to think about this is like this. Here's Socatella, right? <clears throat> so if I wanna know what secant of theta is, right? If I want to know what secant of theta is before I square it, secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So what I do is I say, well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that means secant is its reciprocal. So it's hypotenuse over adjacent, it's reversed. So if I go hypotenuse over adjacent, that's just going to be root uh, 170 over one. That's secant theta. But then I just, I have to square it here. So I square top and bottom, I just get 170. Now cotangent, well, I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 13 over one, cotangent is the reciprocal. So it should be adjacent over opposite. So it'd just be one over, or one over 13. Okay, so cotangent of of uh, pi over two minus theta. So <clears throat> remember, remember the, the identity we have is this. Oh, I cleared everything, darn it. Uh, I can undo that, hold on, let me undo that. So the identity we have, the, the um, complementary angle theorem says, if, if A and B are complementary angles, that means they add up to be 90, that sine of A is equal to cosine of B. And then there's a couple of others, but one of them we have is that cotangent of A must equal tangent of B. So <clears throat> if we look at this cotangent of pi over two minus theta, right, using the complementary, if pi over two minus theta is the complement to theta, which means that um, this should be equal to tangent of theta. And so I'll just put tangent theta here. Tangent theta, we know is 13 over one. So this should just be 13. That's a little weird. Okay, cosecant squared theta. So here we take cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine. <clears throat> sine is, Opposite, or sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. That means cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite, but then I need to square it. So I know that sine of theta is, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put that. Well, okay, I'll put it here. Sine theta is 13 over root 70, one, uh, root 170. Cosecant theta would be the reciprocal of that. And then cosecant squared of that just be square the top and square the bottom. So you have 170 over 169. There we go. Okay, last one. I did this in class. I did it at the end of class. But all you do here, I'm doing I'm gonna let you do this yourself. Um, all you do here, they give you the value. Um, of X and R, they give you the, those values. X is 200, R is 500. So you just label this uh, 200, 500. Use Pythagorean to get your hypotenuse. And then from there, you have your triangle. You should be able to find all six trig function values. All right, that's it for this. Hope that helps.